So um, I use Cubase for mastering. Uh, I work as a mastering engineer um, as well as a sound designer. And um, I mostly use my analog outboard chain for um, for mastering my clients' um, audio, for mastering my clients' tracks. Um, but you can yield a very, very excellent result with that is super similar in the box as well. And um, Cubase has some um, sweet plugins that you can use uh, to achieve that. So here I've got um, my pre-mastered version using my analog outboard. And here is the mix with um, three Steinberg plugins that come with Cubase 9. Uh, the limiter uh, frequency EQ, which is a cool new EQ, and a tube compressor. So here I'll just play the uh, existing master, hardware master. And here is the mix with the uh, the three Steinberg plugins. Another comparison, put somewhere else in the track. Hardware. Software. Different part of the track again. Software. So um, in order to match uh, this, uh, basically um, it's pretty, the track is, um, it's one of my tracks um, that I released a couple of years ago, more of a cinematic sort of, you know, uh, track. Actually the the um, the horns and the tabla are actually, re and the sitar are actually recorded in Mumbai in an excellent studio in India. Um, and then I came back and finished uh, producing the track here in my studio. And um, anyhow, to for this master, the mix, I spent quite a lot of time on the mix to get it feeling pretty balanced, and that's the key to any good master is making sure the mix sounds great. Um, but, yeah, there's a little very slight amount of equalisation going on here. You know, we're talking at most here 2.5 dB uh, increase at 6K um, here, you know, so... Yeah, there's not a lot going on really, but um, then a very slight amount of compression after the EQ. Um, and usually you will put a, uh, any problem frequencies you will get rid of before the compressor. Um, so the compressor is not acting on those frequencies. Um, and then the compressor is only moving, you know, half a dB or so. It's only just tickling the output. And then we have a limiter on the end. Now with streaming services like Spotify and YouTube and Apple Music adopting loudness algorithms, they basically homogenize the, your overall listening experience when you're streaming music so one track's not louder than the other, it means that the loudness wars um, of, of the 90s and noughties are in a sense over because your music's gonna, if your music, if you master your music very, very loud, it's gonna get turned down automatically by those algorithms and now that you know, 70 or 80% of music is being listened through streaming services. Doesn't make sense over compressing uh, your masters and losing dynamic range. Um, and in fact, punch and, and uh, you know, and the dynamics in the music to achieve loudness because it's actually making the music more harsh and sterile.